Ayo di Durhalo was set up in 1989 by a group of local businessmen. They were all fishing together on the Blackwater River, salmon anglers, and they all had their own businesses in the area and could see that the decline in population, the overall economic decline in the area, was having a very bad effect on their businesses. And if they were to stay in business and stay fishing on the Blackwater, something would have to be done. So they decided to set up their own development company, IRD Duhallow. Now, IRD stands for Integrated Resource Development. And the idea is that you take the resources of the area and you develop them in an integrated package. So we have a strategic plan that has the four elements. The human resource development, the cultural development and heritage. And then we have, of course, the economic development, which I referred to earlier. And then coming from that economic development, we can fund our environmental development because it's the one great asset that the Duhalla region has is a fantastic environment. We have the source of the black water, the source of the field, we have a number of tributaries, we have trout, we have salmon, we have an amazing arrangement of birds from the hen harrier to the barn owls, the kestrels, and we're working to develop all of these in tandem. Now, we have to keep the communities involved because I suppose one of our main learnings over the last 22 or 3 years is that it is the community that will drive the development, that will own the development and that will see it through. It's not entrepreneurs or outsiders coming in, it's the community itself. So if we can get the environment and environmental issues to become commonplace, common purpose, vernacular if you like, among the community, rather than being boxed in a PhD lab in some university, it's in as much safer hands. So our big aim is to make sure that anything we're doing, whether it's in this life project or through the leader, leader programme, that the communities, the schools and the plain people of Duhalla are involved at every level. The kernel of the life project is to protect the habitat, the blackwater salmon, the trout, the otter, the kingfisher and the pearl mussels themselves. So we have a whole biodiversity range of um, environmental issues that we can deal with through this life programme. The IRD Duhallow Life Programme is a major nature conservation programme been undertaken by IRD Duhallow on the Upper Blackwater. The Upper Blackwater is designated as a special area of conservation and what that means is that under EU law certain habitats and species are protected. Some of these species which occur in the Duhallow area are of major importance in the European context. The programme aims to target these species and try and enhance their habitat and thereby improve their numbers. 
The pearl mussel is one of Ireland's most important um, conservation species and it's quite rare. There are very few populations left in Ireland which are actually naturally reproducing. On the river Allo, there is still a population of pearl mussel, but that population is rapidly declining. Most pearl mussel on the river Allo are now in excess of 30 years of age, and if something radically isn't done soon, the population will die out. The major threats to the pearl mussel on the Allo are from siltation, coming from drainage programs, forestry, and also from erosion on long riverbanks. The erosion along, along riverbanks is particularly severe, and what we're finding is that we're getting large accumulations of silt over the beds where the pearl mussels occur. We have a team of divers who are fully qualified in the survey of pearl mussels and operate under the license of National Parks and Wildlife Service. These divers are counting the pearl mussels in the river and work all the way down the river catchment. The main focus of the work is on the river Allo, that's where the pearl mussels are concentrated in the project area and the data then is inputted onto a geographical information system and we use that data then to guide the project actions on the ground. Today I'm here with some students from Tralee Institute of Technology. What we're doing is we're looking at the lengths of pearl mussel shells that have been gathered from the river. With these lengths we can get a rough idea of the age profile of the mussels that are dying off in the river catchment. What we aim to do later is cut those shells and take what's called thin sections, look at the rings which occur on the shells. It's a similar process to aging trees by counting the rings on the trunk of a tree once you cut it down. That will give us a more accurate estimate of the age of the mussels. That information should tell us a lot about the population and also when the population stopped recruiting. Duhalo is highly dependent on agriculture, with much of the land being pasture land with upland bogs. The majority of the farms are owned by small family farms, and those farmers have found it difficult in the past 25 to 30 years to compete for land because they're competing with forestry companies. The result of this is much of our uplands have been planted with spruce, and when it's been clear felled, the soil is flowing into the river and causing siltation. Because of this, we have been working with Quilta through our life programme to put measures in place to tackle the problems of bank erosion and the increased siltation. Um, through this, we are using our um, participants on the Rural Social Scheme, which is a scheme for small income or low-income farmers uh, where they work for 19 and a half hours per week uh, in the community and community-type projects um, in return for income, which helps them keep their um, farms viable and provides valuable community work. As part of the LIFE project, we have 20 RSS participants working on this project and they're doing a number of works, including the building of otter holes and putting them in place, um, making um, bird boxes and putting them in place. But the main body of work that they have done is the removal of the invasive plant species Himalayan balsam, which has to be removed by hand. And we have surpassed our targets on that. We have removed over 16 kilometres of Himalayan balsam along the river uh, bank over the past year with um, more work on that to begin soon. By being involved in the project farmers can see first hand not just the effects on the habitat but also the land loss that's occurring. Because farmers have a very important role to play in the protection of our environment we feel that farmers particularly in SPA and SAC areas should be given additional premiums on their single farm payments in order to compensate for land and production for gun. Putting up bird boxes for the, for the birds, for the dippers and the kingfishers and that putting in uh, boxes for the otters, so they're called otter holes, so underground chambers. The lads have just finished that there recently. And then I'm a supervisor here with IRD to Halabiest and Market on this scheme. We would have approximately 60 participants in the scheme. Uh, these participants would come from all the, the local areas, Newmarket, Fremont, Bantir, Red Coles, Runtaraf, all these areas are well represented uh, on, on this project. Uh, basically what we do is try to bring the river side back to its former self. It has been damaged over the years from basic works and cattle moving down, breaking down the banks. We put in logs and uh, 
tight spruce trees onto these. And at the back of these, where we would fit some willow plants, which are actually pushed into the ground and sealed then with, with, the, with, the, with the leg, just to make sure that they are good and firm. The root ball hopefully will develop and tie in the complete bank. This will no doubt be a great benefit in the, in the future to both the, the farmers, the river itself, and hopefully that this good work will continue by other people that once we are all part done here, that other people will continue and, and see the benefits of this and keep it going for the future.